to our final two speakers for the day. So let me just um, share this once again. Right. There we go. Hi, Maggie. Um, look, I'll, I'll just briefly introduce um, Maggie and Luann. Um, so Maggie retired from architecture in 2015 and clearly now spends her time advocating for the integration of art and science in color education programs worldwide. She's the president-elect of the Inter-Society Color Council, the ISCC of the US, and the co-chair of the International Color Association, the AIC Study Group on Color Education. She's currently the chair chairing the Color Literacy Project. So Maggie, thank you very much for taking this time to talk to us. And this is a co-presentation with Leanne Stovall, who is an artist, a color theorist, a lecturer at the University of Texas. Um, a list of places that her paintings and works have been exhibited is really quite um, inspiring and daunting at the same time. She's taught color and workshop at various and um, color workshops and courses at various um, very significant institutions. She's a board director of the Inter-Society Color Council and a member of the steering team of the Global Color Literacy Project. She also has a website, which, um, which I've shown you there. And um, look, at this point, I'm really keen to pass it all over to Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. And let's just make sure I get you. Excellent. Maggie, we can't hear you. Is that better? Yes, okay. First of all, thank you to everyone who's organized this. And thank you to Luann for joining me today. We are both uh, on the steering committee for the Color Literacy Project. Uh, today, we're gonna do a very short presentation called Bottom Up, Top Down. And it's about the strategies that we're using to address all the issues that the previous speakers have addressed as we went through today. And that, and as you can see, there's, there's so much. The topic of color is very, very complex. So um, why are we working on the project? Um, there are many, many, many reasons. And the most important is that we're surrounded by color every day uh, and that all of this surrounds us, gives us all this joy, and yet we understand very little about it. So uh, the other big question is why now? Uh, I, I've talked about this in, to many, many people, and right now, because of all the advances in technology, we have all these opportunities to explore color, to play with color, to engage with color, and a lot of that has to do with uh, being on the computer, doing things digitally. Uh, and the last question I get often is, why literacy? Um, literacy is simply a, a good understanding of a specific topic. And we want to combine science literacy and visual literacy into uh, color literacy. So we called ourselves the Color Literacy uh, Project uh, mostly because of this concept that, that we want to bring the arts and sciences back all the disciplines uh, together. Uh, and I want to start with literacy from the bottom up and talk about key concepts. And when we say bottom up, we mean starting with the babies. Uh, and the key concepts that most children, at least in our English speaking in the US, are really focused on at the very beginning are their letters, their numbers, their colors, and their shapes. If you talk to any uh, preschool teachers, these are the key concepts that they try to instill at a very young age. And why? Because you want ABCs for reading, you want you need to know your numbers before you can learn math. Um, but why colors and shapes? This is what visual literacy is about. It's about understanding how to talk about color, how to talk about shape. So the language is connected to literacy. The language is part of what we are focusing on at the early ages of the project. And the bottom up is about seeing and describing color. So, uh, we want to look at some of the board books, then the four topics that are covered in that very early first introduction to uh, color. 
And you get these, there's four different topic areas. The first is this um, basic color terms, and they're talking the color names. And I have a broad collection of board books. Uh, and typically they will include the 11 uh, basic color terms. And that would fall under the subject area of the language arts. Um, you also will find a lot of board books about rainbows. That'll fall into the subject area of the sciences. Many, many, many little board books about learning uh, about your primary colors, mixing with red, yellow, blue. And I have yet to find any that, that don't talk about red, yellow, blue. Uh, and that would fall under the subject area of the arts. And the other book that is becoming more and more, uh, I find them more and more, are about color and feelings. And I think this is part of our culture today. Uh, the new topic uh, in primary education, the hot topic is called in the US is called um, social emotional learning or SEL. It has supplanted STEAM, science, technology, engineering, and math um, as kind of the hot topic. Uh, and I think that's due to COVID. So let's throw that into social studies. Um, so we end up with these four topic areas. Um, and what we wanna do is uh, take all of these and start exploring beyond the rainbow because what all of these share is an emphasis on just the rainbow colors. Uh, we are working on scaffolding all these topics for the elementary schools at the request of our partner schools because they need to be able to talk to their inspectors and follow the guidance of the standards. Um, so we've started to look at how we can go beyond the rainbow uh, and, and kind of jump over the current baseline that's all, just always about hue. So we want to start uh, connecting in the sciences, we want to start connecting light and color. Uh, in the arts, we actually want to start mixing hue variations, meaning you know you want to go ahead and lighten up the hues and darken them and make them more muted, rather than trying to start them off right away with mixing, say, primary colors. And we want them to uh, use those variations to connect to feelings rather than the symbolic red equals anger, maybe go a little bit deeper. And so this stair step is part of the idea of scaffolding. And uh, to continue that, we are going to be working on uh, modules, uh, really kind of plug in modules for certain topic areas. Um, and at the nursery and preschool area, we're gonna be doing modules on expanding the hue names beyond the traditional ones that they've learned. And uh, we have, as I think, a few people mentioned we have a sorting set that we are prototyping uh, to work with that. We want to make all the modules hands-on. Um, at the next level, we're stuck talking still kindergarten, very early ages, talking about those variations of hue um, and talking about how that connects to light and shadow. And then we want to come across and start including uh, the attributes of color, the anatomy of the eye, 3D color organization. If we can tie together each of the different levels with each of the different topics, we can develop a matrix. And then at ages 10 and 11, this is before they go to middle school, they will have looked at modes of appearance and the color perception triangle. Comparative mixing, this is the first time they will do comparative mixing and it ties right into device dependent color where it's important to understand what gamut is produced by the primaries. Um, up until then, you know, let's just mix as many variations and give them as many colors as we can. Um, and then uh, at that age also, they can start to look at color and culture in a, in a more in-depth way. So this is our draft of, of a scaffolded curriculum uh, that we're running with our partner schools. Um, we, the strategies for implementing those, uh, the scaffolded program, we really want to connect all the modules into um, the current standards, this is the current standards of the US. So the next generation science standards, the national core arts standards. Um, I think the uh, next gen science were adopted in 2013 and the national core arts were adopted in 2014. Uh, we are working uh, kind of guided by the five E's, which is connected into the STEAM, um, as, you know, science, technology, engineering, arts and math. 
as a kind of a movement within the elementary schools and, and running all the way through to high school. And then we've also started to look at social and emotional learning and, and how that is being implemented by the different school districts. There's a lot going on at elementary school right now. And we're asking them to start adding to that by having a color curriculum. So what is our strategy to, to kind of make that work? Um, one of the ideas is that is they could maybe do these plug-in modules on International Color Day. And in fact, our partner school, St. Teresa's in Manchester, England, they are doing a school-wide afternoon on color. Every classroom is going to be working uh, and playing, exploring color on Monday afternoon. And if you, uh, we're gonna get all the photos of that uh, and share more about that when we give a presentation at the study group in uh, June uh, for the AIC. Um, so um, one of the uh, ideas that we're talking about, so I've covered the bottom up and the idea would be that whatever they be designed at the elementary school level, they would repeat it again in middle school, they would repeat it again in high school they would get that uh, maybe expanded um, version of it and really explore it in more depth at those levels. But we want the foundation at the end of elementary school to have really set the stage for going on to higher education. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Luann. Luann's gonna cover our top-down approach. Thank you, Maggie. And thank you to everybody for joining us today on for International Color Day. So we've been talking about color education scaffolding for K to 12 students. And let's now take a look at the role of color at the university level. And if we focus on science, we can start with the science of light and the innovations in lighting. Then there's material science, pigments, dyes, coatings used in manufacturing. We get to the observer. There's a physiology of, of vision and of course, neuroscience. But what about the role of the arts? So if we look around you right now, if something you see wasn't designed by nature, it was designed by humans. All of the design fields serve as a bridge between the sciences and you and me, the general public. So here are some examples um, from, from the arts, um, meaning design, that would be graphic design, marketing, branding, and communication design. We need color in photography, film, and video, arts and entertainment technologies, user interface design, information design, fashion design, product design, interior design, architecture, landscape design, and urban planning, among others. So Maggie presented the foundational building blocks for 21st century color education for younger students, but we have exactly the same challenges at university. So why? One of the reasons is that color education has not been a priority. Most students have received little, if any, color education before they get to campus. So they need to be brought up to speed on color science, color psychology, color design and communications, and color interaction at a more advanced level. But right now, if you want to study color on campus, where would you go? You might guess the art department. That was my department that I grew up in because traditionally color has been associated with studio art and painters. But you'd be disappointed because color education has been mostly neglected. It got stuck in a time warp and hasn't really evolved for decades. The reality is that there's very few dedicated color courses out there. And you've heard a few of them today, which are brilliant, because yes, there are a few exceptions. So this is a shout out to all these progressive uh, faculty in, in various departments around the world. I wish we, we need to clone all of you. Mostly though, color is taught as one of many elements of design in a first year foundations course where there's just a couple of basic paint mixing assignments. Sorry, sorry, Luann and Maggie, we just have to have a three minute warning. Thank you. Okay. Uh, part of the problem is deeply rooted bias against color that has simmered in the culture for centuries. Through this lens, color is considered to be decorative and non-essential, certainly not a subject for serious research. But 21st century color is a completely different top-down, bottom-up paradigm. It's the next generation of color uh, education. We're talking about a reimagined interdisciplinary educational model that could almost be described as meta-color. The goal is to provide university students with state-of-the-art competencies. 
These are color literacy skills that can help them solve real world challenges and thrive in their chosen careers. That's what I mean by meta color. But we know these students don't have training yet, even at the most basic level, so where do we start? The answer is design thinking. Many design disciplines have already embraced design thinking, where the emphasis is on an iterative design process. 21st century color education belongs here, where it can be integrated into the process from the very beginning with plug-in color modules. Not added on at the end as an afterthought, but as a dynamic opportunity for deeper engagement in service of more responsible, informed, and inspired outcomes. So we're launching the Color Literacy Forums as a new platform for university faculty and administrators to participate in this exciting paradigm shift in 21st century color education. Our partners are the Inter Society Color Council, the, Inter the International Color Association, that's the AIC, and Cumulus, the leading global association of art and design education and research with 350 member institutions in, from 63 countries. It's essential for both administrators and faculty to engage in this conversation because the lack of awareness about the need for color literacy is systemic in education. Administrators hold, administrators hold the purse strings. If they're not aware of the benefits for their students, the funding won't be there to make it happen. So this is a call to action. It will take a generation to build the new foundation and we need all hands on deck. The forums will create opportunities to provide feedback and collaborate with colleagues around the world. Keep your, uh, save the date for April 22nd. Um, so next generation color is what we have on our mind and let's take a look at the big picture. By 2025, the goal is to have foundational color modules in play for both K to 12 and university students. By 20, 20, 2035, students entering universities will already have completed the modules so no longer will be necessary to unlearn the misconceptions, which is what the current state is, and their 21st century color literacy skills will be up to date. This is a pinch point in the timeline. Once students have the foundational training under their belts, they will be ready to develop more advanced color applications in all of the design disciplines and all the disciplines that are increasingly complex and global. I can only imagine what they'll be able to create. The sky is the limit. So we will be giving another update, as Maggie mentioned, on June, um, the AIC conference in Toronto at the color, color Group for Study Education. So everybody, please keep in touch. And thank you for joining us on International Color Day. Well, thank you, um, Luanne. And thank you, Maggie. That was um, absolutely wonderful. Um, I, I must admit, um, it feels terrible to to have to um, count count the seconds on these presentations because you, you just get a sense of the richness of the material in every single one of them. And um, in this case, a wonderful call to action in the twenty in the twenty first century. So, look, we we're, we're really grateful for the time and the effort everyone put into these presentations. Um, you know, we're very aware that you know it's it's a Saturday evening in North America. Um, in Ontario, with in, in the case of Robin, and, um, just just thank you so much. Please keep in mind, everyone, that um, this was recorded and that it, the entire recording will be available in the members section of the Color Society of Australia website. So, um, with that, thank you for joining us and uh, go go well, everyone, and um, see you next time. See you next International Color Day. Bye for now. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.